This story starts way back in 1933, when a Philadelphia team known as the Frankfurt Yellow Jackets went belly up during the Great Depression. A group led by future National Football League Commissioner Burt Bell and Lud Ray scooped up the franchise for the grand sum of $2,500 and called them the Eagles. The name and the logo inspired by Franklin Roosevelt's New Deal. The Eagles struggled throughout their early seasons, chalking up just 23 wins in their first 10 seasons. Then came World War II and a shortage of players available to suit up. The 1943 team merged with the Pittsburgh Steelers to form the Steagles, an alliance that lasted just one year. Now it's the late 1940s and the birds are soaring towards a championship, led by running back Steve Van Buren. Eagles took their first title in 1948. Steve goes through the snow to score the game's only touchdown. The birds became repeat champions in 1949, beating the LA Rams 14-0. Well, the 1950s put Philadelphia on the music map. It wasn't much of a high note for the Eagles, at least not in victories, but it did bring them to Franklin Field and brought in some of the greatest players to wear green players that would eventually lead the Eagles back to NFL glory. Little Big Man, Tommy McDonald, Pete Retzlaff, two-way phenomenon, Chuck Bednarik, and perhaps the most important quarterback, Norm Van Brocklin. In 1960, that nucleus of Eagles helped form the team that refused to lose and went all the way to the big game facing Vince Lombardi and the Green Bay Packers in the National Football League Championship at Franklin Field. Nearly 70,000 fans saw the Eagles beat the Packers 17-13 to capture the franchise's third and last championship to date. For nearly the next two decades, Eagles didn't do very much. In 71, they flew to their new home, Veteran Stadium, in South Philadelphia. But it wasn't until the bicentennial when a new man came to town that the birds finally got their fighting spirit back. And with quarterback Ron Jaworski, running back Wilbert Montgomery, wide receiver Harold Carmichael, and linebacker Bill Berge, a revolution began. We're right where we ought to be, playing for the first winning season since 1966. Hey, God love all of you. In 1978, their first winning season since the mid-60s, and then 1980. Eagles host the Dallas Cowboys in the NFC Championship game. Running back Wilbert Montgomery set the tone early. 42-yard touchdown run. Eagles beat the boys 20-7 and were headed to their first ever Super Bowl. January 25, 1981, the Louisiana Superdome. Super Bowl 15. Eagles facing the Oakland Raiders. The day was anything but super. Raiders simply jumped out to an early 14-0 lead. Eagles never recovered. Raiders win at 27-10. Eagles remain in search today of that Super Bowl victory. Let's go forward to Buddy Ryan, who built a legendary defense with the likes of Jerome Brown, Reggie White, and Seth Joyner, and the infamous body bag game where Redskins after Redskin were carted off the field on a stretcher. Then add the unpredictable offensive style of quarterback Randall Cunningham. And the Eagles were looking at an exciting time that finally led to another playoff run in 1988. However, in Chicago, the infamous Fog Bowl, bad weather, worst result, birds were bounced from the playoffs 20-12. It would be a while before sunny skies would ever shine on Philadelphia's beloved Eagles. And now today, Jeffrey Lurie, Andy Reid, Donovan McNabb, four straight trips to the NFC Championship game, a Super Bowl run in the 2004 season, and a team that still has that championship feeling. But the city, the fans, they're still in search for more. Super Bowl glory. That means that the pressure is on for the 2007 Eagles to make history.